This video is about showing you how I can learn plasticity as quick as possible and how you can apply this learning path to any 3D program to master it as quick as possible yourself. So how exactly do I go and learn something from the ground up? Well, first you just need to get it, be it a free trial, be it a student license, be it whatever it is, I do not condone piracy, but just get it, play with it, break it before you look anywhere else. So for those looking to learn plasticity yourself, my journey is starting on Plasticity XYZ. It's pretty awesome. Right here, there's a download for the 30 day free trial. From here, I'm literally just gonna get this installed as it's downloaded here. And then now I'm just going to create my account, play about, and then I'm gonna show you how far I get by just playing around. So here I am about 45 minutes into it and I've got absolutely nothing to show for it. Truly, it's been a little bit abysmal, but this is the part of the learning process that honestly I really dislike the most, but it's so important. Now, yes, I've only spent 45 minutes here. I would usually would spend about three hours at least because what I'm trying to do here is create a list of questions. And this list of questions are gonna be the roadblocks that no matter what, you're always gonna hit when you're learning that program. Even if you went off to a course or YouTube or whatever, and you went and learned a little bit about it, when you dived into the program, you're gonna hit these roadblocks now. So why not figure out those questions now so then while you're learning, you can try and get those answers. And we get those answers through resources. That is the next step. Once you've played, it's time to get those resources. The first resource is obviously from the program itself. See if there's some documentation, then try and just get the answers quickly in there. Next up from there, it's actually community. Try and find the community around this. So I'm pretty sure Plasticity has a free Discord community. So I'm gonna dive in there, see if there's some nice information nuggets in there. The next one is courses, both free and paid. Now what we're looking for here is not massive mastery courses like 120 bucks or whatever. It's just those crash courses, like 10, 20, 30 bucks, maybe 35 at most if you really trust the person who's teaching it. Because truly courses are so powerful. It is someone has learned this, then digested it up into the nuggets of learning information that you need to know to get started. Now, while we're doing this, searching through all these resources, we're looking for the next step. And the next step is a little project, a little learning from project. So this is something that you're gonna either watch and hold and then try and recreate it yourself, or you're going to recreate it while you watch it. So let's see what I find. Last little stretch of learning, dealing with the resources and courses and figuring it all out went pretty well. I haven't been able to find that little learning project just yet, but I have had most of my questions answered. So that means I'm no longer hitting these roadblocks. So much so that I'm now able to just get in and sort of create random stuff and actually understand what's going on. Now, a big part of this is thanks to Glenn Patterson's YouTube channel. He's going through it tool by tool. It's actually one of the steps later on down the line that I go and do myself, but I'm starting to get things. But it's now time for me to call it a day. And that is another little tip. When you get tired, stop, sleep, and come back to things with fresh eyes. If you try and push past that point of just like, oh, I'm not really starting to get it, you're just gonna get frustrated, you're gonna do mistakes, and you're not going to understand where you're going wrong more than anything. It's fine to go wrong. It's understanding where you're going wrong that's more important. So I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna come back to this looking for that learning project and we'll just get making. Right, so here I am in day two. I had my morning coffee and while I was doing that, I finished off the research portion and found that little video that I'm going to recreate, which is this lovely one here by Nikita. It is a little bit longer than what I would actually want to deal with, but it's for absolute beginners. So I'm just gonna sort of skip through it and we'll get to this end result. Let's see how I go. So 
So I might have gone a little bit above and beyond and I've ended up with this here. It is way above and beyond what that little video did, but that's because what I basically did was I carried on doing my little learning flow. So let me explain. What do you do after you've done your little bit and do that? So once you've finished that little learning project, your little bit and do that, then what you're gonna go and do is go back into the program and play around with every single tool individually. Don't worry if you don't understand them. What you're trying to do here is go and figuring out the tools, creating yourself a new list of questions, because guess what? This list of questions, you're now gonna go back to the resources, the community, the YouTube, the documentation, get those questions answered. And at the same time, this time you're looking for workflows and what I like to call tool combos. Tool combos are very much, they're a combination of using the tools to get to an end result, to get to an end modeling technique. And then from there, I would technically say that you've sort of learnt the program, maybe not mastered it. You've mastered it once you can go back in, play around, and no more questions come up to your mind while you're using it. And I would technically say that I feel like I've mastered plasticity. Now remember, when I'm saying mastering a tool, I'm very much talking about the tool. I feel like anything that I could think of, I would then be able to create in plasticity. I'm not saying I've mastered the skill of hard surface modeling, because that takes a very long time and skill and dedication and imagination and creativity that I have not put in at all. But I do feel like I've mastered the tool. And the only way that I can do that now is to prove it to you. So I'm seven hours in and I truly believe that anything I could come up with, I could now create. So I'm gonna do that. I have two ideas. One is very much a 3D printing project, mainly because I really just want to. So it's gonna be a simple pencil pot that's gonna look cool so you can 3D print it as well. And then after that, I'm gonna take on some sort of smartwatch slash PDA thing and let's see how I get on because I've just said that I've mastered a tool. Now, at the end of all of this, I'm gonna basically summarize it all up and also let you know of what to do if you feel like you're getting stuck in this learning process. Man, hard surface modeling is definitely tougher than it looks. It's a skill that I definitely need to develop further, but I was not limited by plasticity at all. It was my own creativity. Now, before I show you the end results, let's just summarize everything. So how do we go about learning these 3D programs as quickly as possible? Honestly, jump in, make yourself a list. That is gonna be the first list of questions that you want to get answered while you go and take on the resources and all of the tutorials and courses and all of that. You just wanted to get up and running and get those hard questions that always come up at the beginning answered. Then you're gonna take on some sort of a learning project to learn with. So you feel like you've created something while you've been learning and the, through the whole process. Because it can be real tough at the beginning if you're making nothing. So if you're making something that you can see online, you're following a tutorial and so forth, the learning project is so incredibly crucial. Then you're looking to play around with every single tool individually. Don't worry if you don't understand it. The whole point of this is to make yourself that list of questions to then go back into the resources and get all of those questions answered and also looking for those tool combos and workflows. From there, you can take yourself into a small project just to try and see if there's any other questions that come up. But if you feel like there's no other questions that are coming up, then you've technically mastered the tool. It's now all about honing the skill, which is quite a big difference. So what about if you're having a tough time and you feel like you're getting stuck? First thing, take a break. Truly, it can be so easy to get in your head. Just take a break. It can be for a day, for an hour, whatever, just, separate yourself from it. Also, the resources are your friend and asking for help to find the right resources is always a good idea. Speaking of which, asking for help is very powerful with a big caveat. Be sure that you share how you've got to that point of asking for help. Show that you're trying. Because if you ask for help and show how you're trying, so many more people are going to want to help you. Because if you're not even willing to try, 
most people won't want to help you because then it's it's sort of a an exchange of effort. If you're going to put in the effort to try and learn, they'll put in the effort to try and help you. And then remember, there is a big difference between mastering the tool and mastering the skill. And when it comes to mastering a skill, it can feel like you don't know the tool. Remember, there's that big difference there. And it is so hard to master a skill and it can be so daunting. So just take it bite by bite. It just takes practice and patience and eventually you'll get there. So here were my end results. I got to this lovely little pencil pot after two hours of tinkering around. I 3D printed it. I added a little bit of rub and buff to it and I'm really happy with it. Now I had to keep this quite simple for 3D printing. So then I took on the next project, which was this wrist smartwatch PDA. And I have to say, I'm quite proud of it. Yes, it's not exactly the best thing out there, but my own skill of hard surface modeling is not exactly amazing. I'm very much a practical 3D printing guy, not this whole artistic art design. So I've got to play around with that because I had a lot of fun. But if I told you that seven hours before, I truly was ending up with a cube and I didn't know how to go any further than that, you might have not believed me. Anyway, that there has been my learning journey with Plasticity. A massive thank you to my patrons. You guys are truly awesome. Without you, I would not be able to create Maker Tales. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there. Remember that we have a Discord. That's a lovely community to go and ask for help in. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.